you're welcome to stand as we listen to our processional hymn and the cross processes up the aisle. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Paul the Apostle on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to those who are with us here in person today and welcome to our virtual congregation who are watching the service on YouTube. We're glad you've taken the time to come to church today. Today, I'd like to welcome uh, some newcomers uh, and visitors, Marge, would you like to stand up and say hello so people know who you are? Hello, Marge. Scott, who's with us for the first week, welcome. And Moira, who is with us for the second week, welcome, Moira. Nice to see you. Please follow along in your bulletin, and we have the slides here as well today. Um, for those of you watching online, if you have any prayer requests, please send them through the chat line today, and we will pick them up early in the prayers of the people. And Sandra Wilson will take those prayers from the chat line and pray them at the end of the intercession. So send your prayers early, please. Our, uh, we will begin with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Almighty God, to you, you all hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from, from you no secrets, secrets are hidden. Cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may turn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 20 to 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing? and fools hate knowledge. Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 19, which we can say together. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells this tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold more than much fine gold, sweeter the far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me, then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. A reading from the letter of James. Not many of you shall become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, 
we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Take Up Your Cross, the Savior said. You're welcome to stand for the gospel as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah, and he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. We 
We live in a world where voices come at us from every direction, telling us how to live. Talk show hosts, politicians, the internet, seminar leaders, authors. Some voices are conflicting. Some lead us down the wrong path. Others lead us in right ways. God's voice leads us in holy ways. Today's proverb tells us that wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. And so I ask, how does wisdom and God find an ear and a place in today's culture, which bombards us with messages? As sophisticated as our culture may be, it also resists wisdom. And sometimes we resist wisdom too. Today's proverb tells us, I have called you and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heard. There's so much wisdom all around us and the truth is we still ignore her. We know the COVID-19 vaccine is effective, yet millions remain unvaccinated and wisdom is put aside. As I read, as I was writing this, I again read the article in the Toronto Star about the anti-vaxxer protests at the hospitals. And I thought, where is that? Where is the wisdom gone? We have these protesters protesting the very people whose lie, who may save their own lives. Where is the wisdom? We know the importance of good eating and exercise, and some of us ignore that. We know we haven't felt well for quite a while. We suspect something is wrong. Yet we resist contacting our doctor. Sometimes we simply resist wisdom. Wisdom is about more than knowledge. It is about being wise and listening for the still small voice of God that never gives up on us amidst the background noises of life that still small voice of God that is wisdom and that can drown out and help us discern the noises that can distract us and confuse us. As in a Christian context, wisdom is about holding fast to practices and traditions that help lead us to wisdom, such as hearing and reading scripture, praying, walking humbly with God and with others. This type of wisdom, this godly wisdom, has very little, do, little to do with knowledge and more to do with insight that puts us on a path of service to God and to others. This wisdom is grounded in the voice of God, the Holy One calling us into the way that leads to a better life. I'm wondering if any of you have seen the movie titled Worth, now playing on Netflix. I see a head going there. Anyone seen it? I watched the movie a few days ago. With yesterday being the 20th anniversary of 9-11, it was timely that Netflix showed this movie. It's about a lawyer who was retained by the US government to calculate the economic value the, law, the economic value of the loss of each 9-11 life, to put a dollar value on all of those lives. Wonder how is that possible? And the lawyer's role included recruiting survivors of the victims to sign on, to participate in this victim's compensation fund through which they'd be compensated, meaning they could avoid millions of dollars in lawsuits and years of it being held up in courts. As I thought about the reading from Proverbs today with its call to wisdom, the movie kept coming back to mind. And so I'll share some of my thoughts with you. The lawyer in the movie was a good man, smart, well-intentioned, proficient in math, good at calculations. The problem was initially, few people signed on with him to participate in this fund because he dehumanized the process. He couldn't gain their trust. 
his basis for calculating the value used in algorithm, a one-size-fits-all mathematical formula that didn't take into account the human aspect of their loss. Their loved one's life value was about much more than a mathematical formula. Their loved one's lives had stories, dreams, feelings, memories, hopes, and their lives needed to be respected. It was more than two years after the lawyer first began this work before he even met any of the survivors face to face. You imagine being involved in this and not meeting any of the survivors. It was by chance when he was late in the office one night and a woman came in, he met the first survivor because he had delegated that role to others in the office. It wasn't until he started meeting them one on one that he got a real sense of the enormity of this tragedy, the complicated human realities of those who were suffering. Only then did wisdom begin to prevail. Wisdom came to prevail as he realized the importance of factoring in the moral aspects of each of these lives lost. The formula he used needed to make room for empathy, and sometimes he just needed to throw part of that formula out the window. It needed to make room for individual situations, for complicated situations, for the 9-11 victim stories and the stories of the survivors. And most of all, the survivors needed to feel their loved one's life was being honored and respected. Today's reading from Proverbs, it's a wisdom reading. The lawyer in Worth could have used a little more wisdom in the beginning, but wisdom finally did prevail, a little more about that later. In today's Proverbs passage, wisdom shows up in the place where each of us lives our lives, in the busy streets, in the public square, in bustling intersections. She shows up with a very good question. Is anyone out there listening? Anyone out there listening to wisdom? She shows up with a warning. To ignore wisdom is to choose destruction. And she shows up with an invitation. Those who listen to me will be blessed. Wisdom shows up in our lives, sometimes in a moment of need, moment of crisis or fear. And sometimes instinctively, we know the right thing to do. Or perhaps we don't. And we can turn to God in prayer for wisdom and guidance, or turn to another we trust to help us discern. But sometimes we let other things get in the way of doing the wise thing. And yet in today's reading, we have wisdom's warning, which is when we forget about the ways of God, we can get ourselves into some terrible predicaments. And so this straight-talking messenger, wisdom, has something to say today, and even though her message isn't easy to hear, it's well worth listening to. Wisdom has put up some caution signs for us, and she's given us a promise of peace and security. And she insists that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And it's that statement that stayed with me uh, in this proverb, and I thought about it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, especially in the context of our lives today. When we find ways to honor God, honor the holy, simple, time-tested ways, like going to church or going to virtual church, saying our prayers, making a bit of time for God each day, maybe a bit of a talk each morning, reading our Bible, saying grace over the meals, sitting in, down in a comfortable chair just to have some quiet time and some peace giving thanks at the start of each day or at the end of the day, or praying for wisdom before we start a challenging task or going into a really difficult situation. When we do these kinds of things, remembering we're not in control and that wisdom is a prayer away, we find that life can have a rhythm and feeling about it that just feels right where each day we know God is ever near. And when God feels ever near, wisdom and clarity of thought isn't far away. Sometimes in our lives, we're not sure of what to do. Perhaps we're struggling with a difficult decision. And so often, 
we feel we're not equipped to make the decisions we're called to make. So often, we fail to remember we don't have to make these decisions on our own. Whatever we face, whatever decisions need to be made, we can raise our prayers heavenward for guidance, clarity, and wisdom. We can be patient and leave space for quietness so we can hear the still small voice of God imprint his wisdom on our heart. We have a good shepherd who walks with us and guides us through life's journey. We can walk with him, talk with him daily. To walk in the ways of wisdom, ask something of us. There are wonderful blessings for us when we pay attention to wisdom, when we walk the road that wisdom walks. We get in a lot less trouble and we feel so much better. And I think there's a comfort in this, in walking a road that is valued by our tradition and that leads us to good places in this life and heavenly places in the next. Wisdom's word in the Proverbs are bold, and they might make us squirm a bit. Yet she's simply seeking the good of each and the good of all. And so let's go back to the movie for a moment. The lawyer at first resisted wisdom because he thought he was right. He was closed-minded, leaving no room for wisdom to seep in and grow. Yet over time, his heart opened as he met with survivors and came to understand what others who had lost loved ones felt. He listened to their stories as tears streamed down their faces. He began to feel empathy, to truly understand human suffering. His eyes were opened, his ears were opened, his heart was open, and space opened up for wisdom to grow. And with this wisdom, he took a different path. He took a different way of considering the value of each life. And then he went back to work, this time working for the good of each and the good of all. I leave you with a simple prayer, one which we could easily pray each morning as we wake up and put our feet on the floor. Loving God, order my steps by your Holy Spirit. Let my choices be guided by your word. Let me not go ahead of you. Amen. You're welcome to stand as you're able as we say together the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You're welcome to stand, sit, or kneel as you prefer for our prayers of the people. On this day, also in our prayers of the people, we remember all of the victims of 9-11 and their survivors and all whose lives 
have been lost through terrorism. The prayers of the people. You know, prayers of the people today, our response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, hear our prayer. In our cycles of prayer today, let us pray for the church and all Christian leaders, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Andrew, our diocesan son and deanery bishop, Kevin, our area bishop and the College of Bishops of this diocese, for Anne, our metropolitan, for Linda, our primate, and the House of Bishops. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we join Anglicans around the world as we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. In our own diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for school chaplains. In our outreach and advocacy cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Paul Innisfil, its support of the Grocery Assistance Program in Barry and the David Busby Center drop-in for homeless and at-risk individuals. For St. Paul Newmarket, its support of the local food bank and in from the cold program. And for St. Paul Oxbridge, its participation in weekly community church, Orange Shirt Day, and Education for Reconciliation and support for the Loaves and Fishes Food Bank. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Jennifer Johnson, Sherelle Joseph, and Margaret Kasperowitz. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for the city of Rexdale, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith. We pray also for the leaders of this city, province, and nation, and for all in positions of authority. May you guide them to seek justice, govern with compassion, and to make good decisions for the benefit of the people they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for safekeeping of our children and youth, many who have returned to in-class learning and many which will continue virtual studies. For teachers and all the education system, including parents who are homeschooling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all in danger, for those who are far from home, prisoners, exiles, victims of oppression, those who are hungry, who have no home, who are without economic stability, and those who live on the margins of society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy and that God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own loved ones and our parish family. We pray for all who are impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, those who are sick, the dying, the grieving, the worried, and we continue to pray for all frontline workers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for healing and wholeness, vitality of life and living, peace of heart and peace of mind, and an awareness of God's presence. We pray for those who are sick and in need of any kind of prayer. You are welcome to name aloud or in the silence of your heart those for whom you have concerns or who are ill. Shall we? 
Colleen, Anthony, Pritam, Susan. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray today for our loved ones departed. Don Love, Vicki Orbs. May they rest in peace. May light perpetual shine upon them. And may they rise with Christ in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sandra, are there any prayer requests that have come through our chat line today? Not today. Okay. Thank you. We continue with the confession and absolution. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're welcome to stand as you're able. And exchange the peace of Christ with one another with a, a nod, an elbow knock, <laughs> a virtual hug. And and you can turn around and uh, and wave to everybody who is watching on screen and wish them the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace of Christ, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We it will begin communion in a moment. Uh, please be seated. We'll begin communion in a moment. Those who are comfortable coming forward to receive communion are welcome to do that. Uh, if you could observe social distancing while you do that, uh, just come forward one at a time to the front uh, step here. When you come forward, sanitize your hands with one of the... Uh, the uh, bottles here and then you know, don't put too much on it comes out really fast and so just be aware you're going to end up with a handful of hygiene uh, stuff so uh, put a little bit on and rub them and when you hear the words the body of Christ given for you step forward and receive communion and then just step aside and remove your mask consume the the host put your mask back and some more hygiene uh, liquid and so I assure you that uh, care, great care has been taken to prepare for communion. None of the hosts have been touched by me or anyone else. They've gone from the container right into a sanitized ciborium. And so I've been very careful. And so I've been the only one to touch the holy vessels and taken great care in preparing. So just so you're aware of that process. 
uh, you should be aware of one more thing. There's a couple of things on the slides. After our uh, hymn, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness, there is something that is not in the bulletin that is on the slide, and that is our offertory thanks, all that we have and all that we offer. So look to the slide, and uh, Susan will put that up, but it's not in the bulletin. And the Eucharistic prayer, I have in twice the Lord be with you and also with you on the slides. So Susan's going to have to take a, cup, a, a second and just whip through two or three slides to get to we give you thanks slide. And I can't edit it out because they're uneditable, these ones here that I've saved. So I'm sorry, you're just going to have to wait a couple of seconds and she'll go through that, uh, that, those extra slides and then uh, we can continue. Our offertory hymn uh, will be played as the altar is prepared for communion. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. As we look to the screen, we say together, all that we have and all that we offer comes from a heart most gracious and free. Take what we give now and give what we need, all done in his name, all done in his name. There will be no offertory taken today. There are offertory plates set at the back of the church. You're welcome to stand as we say the prayer over the gifts. Holy God, accept all we offer you this day. May we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. 
He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Give us your peace. Please be seated. And you're welcome to come forward. Um, we, I guess we, the best thing may be to start at the front row. Here's our, Margaret's going to tell us how we're going to do this. So follow, follow Margaret's lead. Come forward as you're comfortable. Sanitize your hand. Uh, come forward. Receive communion. Step aside so we're six feet away and uh, or two meters away. Take the bread. Put the mask on. Put a little bit more sanitizer on. If I touch anyone's hand, uh, I will sanitize again before I administer communion. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. given for you. This is the 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. Jesus Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Many the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. of 
our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Where is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you? Amen. You're welcome to stand as you're able as we say our prayer after communion. I'll say the prayer after communion, followed by the doxology. God of peace, in this Eucharist, we have been reconciled to you and to our neighbors. May we, who have been nourished by holy things, 
always have the courage to forgive. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing. May God, who loves us all, richly bless you. May you know God's love and hope and peace and joy. May he guide you in his ways of wisdom and lead you to his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any announcements from the floor before we... Uh, Okay, Margaret's coming up. Can't miss that hand. It went up fast. <laughs> and Sandra, too. Okay, thank you, Sandra. So this prayer request is from Jennifer Cador, and she's asking for blessings for her mom, Veronica, her dad, Alton, her co-workers, Tanya and Rosama. So if we could just keep Jennifer and her family in prayer for this week as she goes through whatever is happening. Thank you. Lord. And I'm up here already. When this is, church is over, we depart again from the side that's the choir, the choir side. So the organ side... You can't hear without the mic. Oh, they can hear me. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the organ side would have to wait until the choir side has, has exited, and you exit on your left. Thank you. Good morning. I also have a prayer request. Um, a very good friend of my daughter, uh, Candice Gray, is currently going through um, an illness. Uh, she was at her church last Sunday and she fainted and was taken to hospital. And after um, tests and MRI, she was diagnosed with cancer. Oh. 35 years old. So please keep Candice Gray in your prayers, please. Thank you. That is a prayer for Lisa. Yes. Also, um, I wanted to say again this week, every week I'll give an update. Uh, thank you to everyone who has supported us so far with the Walkathon. Um, our, our donations are coming in, um, and they will continue to come in as the days go, go by. I wanted to announce that at this point, at the last conk, we are at $5,777.34. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we continue to count. Thank you very much. Mark, I'm sorry to hear about Lisa. Be in touch. A few brief announcements today. Uh, next week is Back to Church Sunday, so please, if you feel comfortable inviting someone back to church in these pandemic days to come with you, uh, do so, and if they're comfortable coming. And, and you can extend an invitation to your virtual church as well. Uh, September 25th, Saturday evening, we're having a, a trivia night on Zoom. So watch your email for, uh, for those details. We continue to meet Thursday evening, our Zoom gathering at 7.30, which is always very nice. This Friday, our book club resumes by Zoom, and we have two wonderful books that we're starting out this fall. If you are interested and are, have not signed up yet, go and see Sandra. She's right at the back, or she'll be at the front desk there uh, as, as folks leave, and she uh, will tell you more and include you in the book club mailing list. If you have ideas for a fall Bible study, something you've ever wanted to talk about, or just have open discussion about 
Uh, it can be anything at all. Uh, just please let me know. If I don't hear anything in a couple of weeks, I'm going to make that decision myself. So, uh, so please, I'd like your input if possible. A couple of weeks from now, October 3rd, we have Blessing of the Animal Service Sunday afternoon. Always a joyful uh, ser service uh, at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon, October 3rd. If anyone is uh, here, has moved or changed their phone number, anyone listening on virtual uh, church, please let us know. We can't be in touch with you. We're getting emails, a few emails returned as no longer valid. A few of the phone numbers don't work anymore. Please let us know. We can't be in touch unless you uh, update the information. Uh, next Sunday afternoon, there's going to be a di diocesan-wide confirmation service. I've just heard back from the diocese a couple of days ago, and today, later on today, I'll be in touch with all of the confirmation candidates and their families and the sponsors. It looks like we're going to be able to have three guests per candidate, whereas we thought we were only going to have be able to have one and possibly two. So that is good news. So um, I'll be in touch later today and tomorrow. I hope to reach everyone. Anyone who's listening, if you're a confirmation candidate or a sponsor, uh, be in touch with me by phone today or tomorrow. If not, I'll call you. There are some prayers and book suggestions for this uh, Earth uh, create, time of creation, which the church has set aside, and they're at the end of our service bulletin. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and being with us today. It, it feels so life-giving to see you in church and not be in an empty church Sunday after Sunday. It's made such a difference. And so nice to see you, uh, see you all. Yeah, thank you, Pansy. Yeah, Pansy always takes her front row seat here. Now the take good care, everyone. Our numbers are going up. They're not going up astronomically, but they're still creeping up. So please take good care. If you haven't been vaccinated, my husband and I and all our family have been vaccinated. And my own feeling, and I think the feeling of the church, is it's the Christian response uh, to protect yourself, your neighbor, and others, and our parish family. So if you haven't got the vaccine and aren't sure about it, you're welcome to come and talk to me, and we can send you some information to read, put you in touch with people that you can talk to and get an objective view on vaccination. We've had vaccinations for decades that work, and this one is uh, uh, also works. So please take good care of yourself in, in the coming, coming days and weeks. Our final hymn today is, uh, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised and will stand as the cross is carried uh, down the aisle. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.